Welcome guys, Mr. Hyatt here, uh, and today we're talking about ecology. So um, you guys know I like to put an emphasis on our word skills, so uh, we've talked about biology in class already. That's bio meaning life and ology meaning study of, so biology is the study of life. And ecology, eco meaning environment, ology again meaning study of, so ecology is the study of environments. But I, what I really want you to push for is that ecology is the study of interactions. So you've got a couple of places to fill in some definitions on your notes. So near biology, write the study of life. Near ecology, write the study of environments. And then you've got a blank below that says ecology is, and, and we're going to put the study of interactions. So we might be talking about interactions between two living organisms. We might be talking about the interactions between uh, a living organism and a non-living part of its environment. Picture like a bear living in a cave. Um, so the next little bit, just focus on interactions between things. I like to include this picture because this shows all the biomes of Earth. And you've probably learned about biomes in your middle school science classes. Uh, you can see that we are right here in the grayish color. We're the deciduous forest. Uh, we get that. Uh, the, the name of that biome because our trees lose their leaves. Uh, they change color in the fall and then fall off in the winter. Um, so that's the predominant life form in our biome. We'll study more about those uh, next week, maybe the week after. A lot of vocab in this um, in this presentation. So the biosphere is the part of the earth where all life can be found. So I don't want you to get the, the picture that if you got into a rocket and you took off into space, you would pass a sign that says now leaving the biosphere. It's just sort of an arbitrary term for wherever there is life. It's going to be from where the highest bird that lives at the top of Mount Everest flies uh, down to probably hydrothermal vents where life exists down deep in the ocean. So wherever there's life, that's the biosphere. Abiotic factors, and I, I think this may be backwards on your notes. I'm not 100% sure because I can't see the notes on my screen while I'm looking at this presentation. But um, abiotic factors are going to be, uh, again, look at the word. Bio means life. Tick makes it an adjective. And A always means without. So describing without life. So an abiotic factor is going to be something that's non-living. So things in this picture that are going to be non-living are going to be things like rocks, sunlight, temperature, humidity, water. Those are all going to be non-living things. Now remember there's a difference between non-living and dead. Dead means was once alive. Non-living means never ever has been alive, never ever will be alive. So roadkill on the side of the road is still a biotic factor because it was once alive. Uh, a wooden desk is still a biotic factor because it was once alive. Biotic factors um, are the opposite. They're anything that, that is alive or has been alive. So plants, animals, um, bacteria, fungi, things like that. You, you looked at what it means to be alive yesterday, I think, maybe the day before. Okay, so in ecology, one of the most important things is to be on the same page. So um, ignore this biological community uh, term for right now. That's not supposed to be there. Okay, so we're going to look at how we group organisms to study them in ecology. And we're, we're going to look at a couple of different, um, I'm sorry, we're going to look at a couple of these a little bit more in depth uh, over the coming weeks. So an organism is one living thing. We group similar organisms, we get a population. So a population is the same species in the same place at the same time. What are the amount of people in Indiana today? What are the amount of dogs in Crawfordsville in 1973? We've got a same species, same place, same time. If we get 
two populations or maybe all of the populations in an area at the same place at the same time. Now we've got this biological community. That's where this term was supposed to appear. So here we've got our ants and our bulls interacting. Somehow they uh, impact their ecosystem. If we add in abiotic factors, um, now we're doing an ecosystem study. So maybe these bulls and these ants live right next to this lake, and there's a buildup of um, nitrogen in the water because of all the waste from those animals. So now the nitrogen and the water are going to be abiotic factors that are impacting our biotic factors, and our biotic factors are impacting our abiotic factors. If we group a bunch of ecosystems together, now we get our biome. So in Indiana, we've got a lot of different kinds of ecosystems that group together to make the deciduous forest. We've got swamps, we've got wetlands, believe it or not, we do have both of those. Um, we have prairies, we have lakes, rivers, and streams, we have dunes, we have um, uh, hills. So we've got a lot of different ecosystems that get parsed together and form our deciduous forest. Of course, I left out the, the forests. Of course, we have forests. We're a deciduous forest. Some more vocab. A habitat is where an animal lives. Notice the habitat is where an animal lives, not the community. A community is a group of populations. That's something that tons of people mix up in this unit and eventually end up missing on the test. So remember, habitat is where an organism lives. A niche is an organism's role in an ecosystem. Okay, so I used to teach this as its job, but that's sometimes hard to define with a plant. What's a plant's job? I don't know. What's a plant's role in the ecosystem? Well, the plant's role is to provide energy for the food web. That's its niche. So if you think about a person in, 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 uh, as a metaphor for this, I think it'll help you make sense out of what I'm trying to say. A niche is bigger than a job. So in my adult life, I've had a couple of jobs. I've been a teacher and I've been a coach. So those have been my two jobs. I would argue that my niche is to help people to improve themselves. So you can see they're, they're similarly related, but it's just a bigger picture kind of a, an approach to the word niche. Again, that's kind of vocab, but it's one that's going to be important as we move on uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, we need to remember the difference between a food chain and a food web. Um, this is kind of silly, but uh, a food chain is going to be linear while a web is going to be webby. Um, you can see on the left here, we've got several examples of food chains. Notice we start with a producer, something that makes energy from the sun. Then the next step is going to be an herbivore or something that eats plants and then something that eats uh, eats herbivores and then so on and so on until we get to a quaternary consumer. Sometimes that's called an apex predator. Uh, but these are very link, 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 step, 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 step. A web, like you see on the right, is not so neat and orderly. A web, the key is going to be Notice that we've got the rabbit eating two things. Of course, that's more realistic. If you eat a hamburger for lunch today, you're eating five different food sources. You're eating wheat in the bun. You're eating cheese if it's a cheeseburger. So that comes from a cow. You're eating beef that comes from a cow. You're eating lettuce. Maybe you're eating cucumber in the form of a pickle. Maybe you're eating a tomato in form of ketchup. Uh, so you're eating a lot of different foods. And that's just in one part of one meal. So uh, webs are messier, but much more accurate. Okay, so the arrows are huge. Tons of people have trouble with this. The arrows show the flow of energy and nutrients in a food chain or web. So think about it this way. The grass gives its nutrients to the grasshopper, or the grass gives its energy to the grasshopper. The grasshopper gives its energy and nutrients to the mouse, which gives its energy and nutrients to the snake, to the owl, and so on. 
we have not done these skits yet and I think we for sure will uh, but it will it'll be after I get back so I will remind you of this uh, in about a week so again let's break down the words sim means together bio again means life and cis means state so symbiosis is going to be the state of living together and we're talking long-term relationships here we're, so this is uh, an old comic that used to be called The Far Side. Uh, you can see here's animals working together to beat up the farmer, whatever. Um, so if we're talking, we've got three types of long-term relationships. Somebody has to benefit from every long-term relationship or they'll leave. They won't have a, a long-term relationship. If both individuals or both organisms are being harmed, they'll move apart. So you got to remember somebody is going to be benefited from every one of these interactions. If we're talking about a mutualistic interaction, think about having mutual respect for someone. That means you both respect one another equally. So in the case of mutualism, oh, sorry, both organisms benefit. So the way that I would write this on your notes is I would say something like both organisms benefit or I would do smiley face, smiley face our highly scientific notation um, because they're both happy the example I've got on the screen is the clownfish and the anemone uh, you, you recognize this from Finding Nemo uh, so the clownfish gets protection gets a place to live because these these arms that's what the, these tentacle looking things are called arms they're electrified so in, in the movie Nemo Finding Nemo you might remember um, Nemo had to roll around or something so that he was protected from the shock as he went through. So that's what the clownfish gets out of the interaction. The arm gets cleaned up because occasionally these arms, they're really more like leaves than arms. Uh, but occasionally those die and the clownfish eats those so the clownfish cleans them up. So they both benefit from their long-term interaction. Commensalism is the hardest one to say and is the rarest in nature. Best example that, that I can think of is the shark and the remora. Remora is uh, or are these fish that swim around sharks. Um, so these are not sucker fish. They don't stick to the shark. They swim near the shark. I know it kind of looks like these guys are stuck to the shark, but they're not. Um, so basically what happens is these fish don't impact the shark at all. The shark swims around and does what it does. Anybody who's seen Shark Week knows how a shark eats. It's going to grab onto something and then it's going to shake it. If you've ever played the pull game with your dog or with a dog with a rope, it's, it's that same kind of concept if you haven't seen Shark Week. Well, that's going to be a messy process. There are going to be bits of food all over the place in the water. So the fish are going to swim around and pick up the scraps doesn't impact the shark. It's not worth the, the energy that it would take to scoop them up for the shark to swim around and get them. So it, it doesn't impact the shark in any way. Last but not least is parasitism. I think you guys probably already know parasitism. Um, if, I, if you're using smiley faces for commensalism, do smiley face and straight face. You guys have, have used that emoji before. Uh, again, parasitism, one or organism is going to benefit, one is going to be harmed. Do smiley face, frowny face. Uh, you're looking at lamprey eels here. Uh, lampreys are an invasive species in Lake Michigan. They drill into fish. You can see right here there's a place where it's been ripped off his head. Uh, eventually that's going to kill the fish. Uh, the lamprey gets food, gets energy, gets nutrition. So they get the smiley face and the fish obviously is getting the frowny face because he's getting fed upon and, and eventually killed. Things like fleas and ticks are, are common parasites. Um, uh, so some types of worms that we can get. Uh, our common hum human parasites. So if if there's anything that's blank, we'll fill it in when I get back. We'll use the rest of the time today to finish up anything that you haven't finished from the week. I hope everything's going well. If you have any problems, email me. You can find my email on the front page of Canvas.